There are 50 slots on the training tab, and when I last checked, 22 of them were taken up by either a movie trailer, TV late night host, big brand, or TV show. This is ridiculous when you account for the fact that YouTube only has three main tabs to explore their entire site, and in one of them, about half the options are TV related, which means their main product isn't even on YouTube, it's just an advertisement to go watch their show or movie. So in other words, the trending tab has become a glorified TV guide. This problem isn't new. Trending has been frustrating YouTubers since 2015. You see, it all started when YouTube released a cryptic statement about what kind of videos would be featured. Some trends are predictable, like a new song from a popular artist or a new movie trailer. Others are surprising, like a viral video. We aim to surface videos that a wide range of viewers will find interesting and novel. Now this got people excited because it seemed like a great way to feature new viral creators, but that's not really what happened. In the end, it's led to a stagnant, predictable system where every day it seems like a mashup of John Oliver meets BuzzFeed Blue, dominated by videos that have lots of marketing resources behind them, whether that be Business Insider, the NFL, SNL, what the hell? Oh, wait, that's Casey Neistat on Trending again, but he's sponsored by CNN, so it's okay. And why is this happening? Is there a conspiracy where YouTube's trying to promote big budget movies or TV shows? I don't think so. But whenever you rely on an algorithm to sort things, people are gonna find a way to exploit and optimize for that algorithm. When YouTube started the trending tab, they knew they didn't want already big YouTubers dominating the space every day with their videos that consistently got millions of views. And that makes sense. PewDiePie on trending every day would get super old, but how do you find viral videos when you can't use view count as an indicator of virality? Well, YouTube's solution was to base who gets on the trending tab on a variety of factors. How fast is the video growing? Where are the views coming from geographically? But most of all, where's the traffic being driven from? This last factor is really important because it explains how the Time Warner tab came to be. Because if your main way to push content is through YouTube, you're not considered viral by YouTube because all your traffic is internal. But if you're someone like Jimmy Kimmel and people love to share your crying monologues across Twitter, then your video is gonna hit the trending page because the views from Twitter are counted as more valuable because it's coming from across platforms. This is why Buzzfeed, GoPro, Business Insider, big brands hit the trending page so often because they have huge marketing teams that spread their content across all the platforms while independent YouTube creators tend to focus on YouTube. I want to talk for a moment why having the system this way is a bad thing. First, YouTube is not great because it houses the highlights of TV. YouTube is great because it isn't TV. It isn't or at least wasn't dominated by big corporations. It was governed by a meritocracy of independent creators. In fact, the whole reason for YouTube's popularity is thanks to these people. So when YouTube makes one of the key navigation options of their website accessible to a small minority of YouTubers and to a large majority of advertisers and TV influencers, it seems like a bad move and a step away from who they are at their core. And in a weird way, I'd prefer one of YouTube's own clickbait monsters getting featured over going back to the same TV culture of recycled, over-polished stuff that I could watch on the TV I no longer pay for because the internet is better. How was Nebraska? Oh, better than North Dakota. I guess that joke's only funny in Nebraska. That joke is not funny here. Um, wow. Oh my god. I really don't believe this. Um Second, it isn't like we don't know where to find these brands or TV shows if we wanted to watch them. Why shove them down my throat? I already know who Seth Meyer is. Why not show someone who's blowing up on YouTube that I haven't heard of? I mean, in a way, it's kind of ironic. The trending tab was designed not to overpromote the already huge channels of YouTube, but it ended up doing exactly that. Only instead of promoting their own, they're overpromoting the very media structures that they replaced a decade ago. And before you say, okay, but what about Creator on the Rise? And that is a start, but consider this. There are 2 million people eligible to be a creator on the rise, which means that every day if you were dealt a hand of cards, you'd draw a royal flush three times before you got featured on the creator on the rise page. It's a gesture that looks good, but is pretty meaningless. Now, given YouTube's incredible track record of listening to creators, I don't think this is going to change anytime soon, so it might be worth saying if you're a YouTuber and you ever want a shot at hitting the TV guide of YouTube, you might want to focus on diversifying where your views come from, because being successful on YouTube isn't enough. You've got to have a large audience off YouTube, which is a lot easier to do when your main product isn't YouTube. So in the spirit of that, if you like this video, you can help my channel by liking my Twitter page and my Facebook page linked in the description below and retweet and share this video. If enough people watch and share this video from other social media sites, who knows, we might just end up on the trending page, but probably not. I need my CNN sponsorship to come in first.